Huzzah, Rangers! This is your boy Phil Harris here at the Jacks Rangers Show. I am joined with a very, very special guest this time around. He is the new assistant coach for the New England Free Jacks. His name is DeWald Senecal. We're going to speak to him in a moment. Let's go through our ad read that we have on every single episode of the Jacks Rangers Show. This video is sponsored by Inkify. Custom printing and embroidery since 2010, Inkify, Inkify provides high-quality decorated apparel nationwide. From ordering the apparel to printing, adding a private label, folding, bagging, and fulfillment, they handle it all so you don't have to. Head over to Inkify.com to get started on your order and tell them TJRS sent you. That will get you 15% off of your entire order, and that is a hell of a deal. DeWalt, how the hell are you, sir? I'm very good yourself, Huz. How are things in Boston? Great. The weather's pretty nice. Actually, we've been uh, low 70s Fahrenheit, so that's really, really good for October. Normally much colder. How's uh, how's Italy? Yeah, good. At the moment, I find myself in Treviso. We are doing some work with the, the yeah. Benetton Treviso side in the, mm -hmm. in the United Rugby Championship. So we just uh, to spend the Sunday reviewing our game against Leinster right. last night. And uh, unfortunately, didn't go to plan. But uh, yeah, no, Italy's been good. Uh, Better relaxed lifestyle, so uh, good. So it's been pretty good. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. It's really nice to have a coach with such experience. We're going to get into that a little bit later on. But first, you know, I'm detecting an accent that's not Italian. Tell us where you're from. Yeah. So I um, originally grew up in South Africa in a little place called Dispatch, which is uh, which is well known in South African rugby because because it's also the birthplace of uh, many Springbok rugby players, uh, sure. and one in particular one in particular that's got a bit of merit at the moment is Rassi Erasmus, who actually grew up in the same town. So, um, wow. so it's a bit of a, a bit of a rugby town, and um, so grew up in South Africa. Um, my background's a little bit different. I had actually two uncles and my dad who played a lot of rugby, but me growing up, I was an absolute fan of cricket, and I was pretty pretty decent at it. So I, I ended up playing a lot of cricket as a youngster, and um, I only really started playing rugby when I was twenty four. Wow, that's uh, incredible! Yeah, and then I, and then and then I played rugby for about four years in South Africa before I ended up um, in in France in the top fourteen with Toulon, and I've been here for fifteen years. So incredible! Now, I mean, the, I, most people would never guess that a guy from South Africa would have started out playing cricket. I mean, you know, I, it, the Wikipedia says you were a very good cricket player. Um, why did you choose rugby over cricket uh, so late in the game there? Yeah, so as I said, like um, I had I've, oh, a little bit of background on me. I've, I've from a very young age I was struggling with my knees, um, mm. but uh, so what, what happened? Unfortunately, what happened is every time I had a bit of knee trouble was in the winter part of the year. So when I was supposed to start playing a bit of school rugby and that, every single time I would have some some niggles with my knee, um, which I would rehab and then end up end up being fit for the cricket season. So that's how cricket took the gotcha. the, took the upper level on that. And then, um, and as I said, as I started getting uh, better at it, um, started playing for our local provinces, um, mm -hmm. represent, representative sides under 17, under 18, under 19, and then eventually for the South African under 19 side, mm -hmm. where I was fortunate enough to go to, uh, to the Cricket World Cup. Wow. Um, for the for the for the juniors for the under 19s, and then before I'd even finished my final exams at high school, I had already signed a contract to become a professional cricketer. Wow! Um, so I was very really fortunate in that sense. Um, and I so I ended up playing three or four years um, at a professional level uh, in South Africa. And then what happened within South African sport and within South African cricket was. Um, they went from a provincial system to a franchise system. So instead okay. of having instead of having thirteen teams, they went only to six. Okay. So obviously, um, your player base was very was smaller. Um, mm -hmm. They wanted strength as a strength. And at that stage, I was offered a pretty poor contract. Um, I wasn't playing well in 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 in, in um, reflection. And then um, and then at that stage, I just had mates who were playing rugby. I'd say, listen, in the off season, come and play a bit of rugby, and let's see what comes of it. And and it actually, sure. it just snowballed really quickly. And I was very fortunate to, after only a few games, to to be picked up by some people 
that, <clears throat> that thought they had talent and then ended up uh, deciding to take that uh, that road there. So, which uh, which suited me in a little bit. Obviously, cricket is a very technical game. Right. Um, uh, but it's very difficult to 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 impose yourself physically, or and and I had a natural aggression and physicality to my game, which which when I moved to rugby became became a bit of a an advantage. Yeah, I mean it makes the most amount of sense. I mean if you've got that physicality and aggression, rugby is exactly the place where you would need to be for sure. And you're a tall guy. I mean I, I looked on your Wikipedia page, even taller than myself. So um, you know you played professionally in South Africa in France. You've coached in France, Ireland, and Italy in the URC. How many languages do you actually speak at this point? Yeah, so I speak Afrikaans, obviously it's my mother language. So, so I speak Afrikaans, speak English, uh, speak fluent French, and I'm in the process of of, of getting the, the Italian up to scratch. So hopefully within the, within the next few months, I'll I can understand quite a bit, but um, right. uh, my wife's actually my wife's actually the polyglot. Uh, she speaks uh, English, Basque, uh, French, wow. and it and it and and Spanish. So she she's Incredible. she's a stronger one. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. I guess a, a lot of the Italian is just doing this, right? Like you get your point <laughs> across if you're doing that, yeah. and you're just passionate, right? So um, no, they, they do speak with their hands and with yeah, a lot of emotions. For sure, so, yeah. For sure, absolutely. Um, any paths crossed with our former head coach Scott Matthew, who's South African? Yes, actually, uh, Scott and I we, we know each other pretty well for for too well for a number of reasons. We obviously um, actually, as I was making my way up through the professional ranks, my first few clubs were smaller smaller unions in South Africa because I didn't really have the rugby CV when I started. So right. And then what happened was back in the day, some of these smaller unions had affiliations with some of the super rugby teams and um, ours was with the Sharks. So I had actually spent four or five months in the Sharks' largest super rugby squad, uh, of which Scotty was in there as well. Mm -hmm. So and and um, so we that was our first, first contact from that point of view. Um, and then... We spend a bit of time there together. Obviously, we both started our coaching journey around right about to right at the same time. Right. Um, so, always kept in, in contact in some way or form. And then, um, and then what happened towards the mi middle of the season last year in the MRR, um, Scotty had reached out and Tom Kindley had reached out to me around um, just coming on board and, and, and doing a little bit of consultancy on the set piece and, and, and chatting uh, on a weekly basis to, to Will Webster. So um, I was pretty keen to well, always try to keen and help as much as I can. So we, we actually came to a point there for about, I'd say for about six, seven rounds where every week I would prepare the match like I was coaching it and then oh, wow. I would present. And then I would present to to Scotty and to um, to Will with some of the ideas I got, and then we just exchanged around that. And then the the beauty about it was is that Will actually then was able to go and choose and put his own little own little thing on it. So towards the end of last season, that's how the initial um, contact with 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 the Free Jets came in. So um, and then obviously. The boys went on. When we got to the playoff stages, I, I just let them be because it's not the time of the year right. when you're in those type of games to to really get influenced by someone outside. Um, right. But yeah, yeah, no, fair place to to Scott to Tom that they took the initiative to contact me and they wanted to, the team to keep um, developing. And then a real big hats off to Will, who's obviously done two years there and he's done a yeah. great job. And he was really open to <clears throat> some of the ideas and at the end of the day. He put his secret sauce to to some of the ideas, and and obviously the boys had a brilliant season in the end, and found found a way to to become back to back champions, which is great. Absolutely, I'm wearing the hat. I can, I'll continue I to wear the hat probably for quite a while here. You know, we're just super super excited to have such a a great and competitive team here in New England, and to be back to back champions is just the cherry on top for sure. Um, that's very interesting. I think that's the first time that we've heard that you were helping out 
during the season a little bit uh, with the set piece. So, you know, very, very excited to get you on board here. The fans mm-hmm. I know are are clamoring for a third championship in a row. I mean, obviously that's very, very difficult to do, but, you know, in New England, it's, it's very much a championship area. We want to win as much as possible. Um, New England has some very good players as well, which is always nice. Uh, what players are you looking forward to working with the most? I know, as I said, I've had the fortunate, uh, I've been fortunate, I've watched quite a bit of the of, of the, the games and, and and obviously really have a, a more of an eye with the forward. So obviously um, the, the, the pack I feel is, is, is a pack that's really mobile and gets around and works really hard, the one for each other. So really looking forward to, to working with all the boys. I mean, I think my, my biggest, um, my biggest, like a lot of coaches chase trophies and things like that. So, and and that for me that is the that is something that is the end product of a lot of work and and, and process and and culture and the environment that we create. But I think the thing that makes me get up every morning is just to help um, each and every single player develop and evolve throughout the season. And and mm-hmm. the sum total of all that work will get the team closer to to any silverware at the end of the day. So, Absolutely. so yeah. Um, uh, I think no, no. I'm looking forward to working. There's some really experienced guys, Andrew Quatran, Connie Keys. Um, yeah. uh, looking, I think everybody's looking forward to seeing Bian Conradi back on the field. Um, uh, some of the draft, some of the draft boys, and then obviously um, we, we've picked up one or two guys out of Dallas, which is going to which is going to help the pack grow as well. So um, no, no. As I said, like I'm really looking forward to. Um, to, to meeting all of them and see what if I can help them each and every one um, grow a little bit individually and and as a as a pack of forwards um, and as a team throughout the season. So yeah, I'm 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 really really excited to get going. We started some we've had one or two little coaches meetings on on um, on Zoom and that. So it's starting to take form uh, slowly but surely. Yeah. It's very exciting stuff. I mean, I'm very encouraged listening to what you're talking about. Obviously, trophies are, are the end goal, but development is what gets players there. We don't have finished products here with, in New England. We're, we're mostly a younger squad. I mean, we have a lot of experience in certain areas, a lot of international experience as well. But there's a lot of young guys trying to prove themselves uh, within this squad and all over MLR. So development is uh, definitely necessary and something that uh, is very encouraged throughout the year, I'm sure. Um, how would you describe your coaching style? Yeah, so, so the one thing that actually got me really excited about um, coming across and working working with the Free Jacks was um, when Scotty and them actually asked me to have a look. I, they, I, they gave me access to huddle to watch all of their trainings, all of their meetings. Um, there was obviously that documentary that uh, that followed them in the in in, the, in Scotty's second year and the first mm-hmm. year of the title. And the one thing as a coach, uh, I just at that time was coaching in France in the top 14. And um, and the one thing that I really, really appreciated is whenever they were in an environment, uh, coaches, players, um, you could see when, when Scotty spoke, when the players spoke, a lot of them shared some really intimate things um, and having access to all the meetings that were filmed. The players seemed really comfortable and the coaches um, feel really uncomfortable to put themselves out there and and say talk about their families, talk about their their ups and downs in front of each other. And I, and and when I saw that, it was actually for me a real a real clicking uh, uh, in French you say in click. But um, it was a real moment where where you could see that this is an environment where people care about each other and that they feel comfortable and enough trust in the environment that they can talk about those things. Um, so I say the first part about me that. Is, is the care factor like caring caring about what i'm coming in to do i think in just like an, in in a relationship when you care about something you will sacrifice for 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 that person or for that thing or for that end goal so if you care for your relationship you will go through the tough times and you'll work hard and you'll get up early and you'll do the effort so for me i think it, the first thing that starts is with care so um, so for me, the big thing in the beginning is just to build the, the, the trust and the care factor with the player, with the rest of the coaching staff, and they, they know that I'm there for the right reasons. Um, like I said, uh, I actually wish, wish the fact that my knees were a little bit in a bad place 
I was going to take a few months away from the game because I actually had a full knee replacement in the off season. Oh wow! But but that but that recovered beautifully, and that's why I'm able to do Italy now, and then the the the, the, the MLR next year or start of January. But um, so when I saw that, I thought, just, I've got to, I've got to go over there. I need to go and experience this because because it gets me excited. It gets right. me excited to go and find out what's the secret sauce and why this group of men have already um, had so much success in in the two or three years when they were there with Scotty. Um, so uh, yeah, so I, I would say care is the first part. Then second part is is um, uh, I am a technical coach because of my cricketing background, so mm -hmm. I feel like uh, part of the fact that I can help the guys grow is because technically I'm really strong in, in, in some of the set piece facets. So for for every for every reason that something well, for every time something doesn't go right, there's a reason. So we can quickly pick up those little little technical things and fix that. And 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 I feel my strength is finding the right exercises, trolls, videos, presentations to actually quickly, quickly learn from those scenarios. And then, mm -hmm. and then the last part would just be, I'm, I'm not afraid to take chances. So, um, so try something new. So I think one of my ideas and things that I've already started working on is actually is, is challenging the status quo on certain things. So I've got a whole, whole list of things that, that I'm working on and putting together that I want us to try there and feel that, that um, it, could, it could actually challenge the status quo. So I'm not scared at any stage to, to try new things. If I've got buy-in from my players and once they yeah. get the trust and understand that, that everything I do is is is, is thoroughly thoroughly thought through, um, and I spend time, and, and and it's gotta make sense for me. For me, a good coach and a good team or a good player is someone that gets does the right things 80% of the time, um, mm -hmm. and 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 20% of the time it's it's not 100%. But um, uh, I won't do something if, if I'm only maybe going to come out with a 50-50 success. I want 80. Yeah. I want to make sure I get 80s um, on that. So, and the same thing with for for me, we're good players. A guy that consistently does the basic things well, mm -hmm. and then and then he's got another 10% where he does something brilliant out of the box, and then another 10% where there's going to be a bit of waste. So the closer we can get to those numbers and keep the group growing, I think the closer we'll get to to being a really competitive outfit again next season. Listen, I mean, I think a lot of Free Jacks fans are nodding their head just like I am as they're listening and talking about your coaching style and uh, leading with caring first. I mean, I think above all else, love, right? Love for the game, love of your brother beside of you. That is definitely something that has been built up within this locker room. Um, I talk about this a lot. I'm sure people are like, oh, you're going to tell this story again. But yes, I am. Um, when we uh, had that awards dinner, uh, not this most recent season, but the one before that, I was there and the, the guys that were getting awards, like there, there was just roaring applause from the other players encouraging and, and, and you know, celebrating with the guy that won. I was like, these guys love each other. Like, you know, and that helps along with the entire process that makes the teams, you know, five or three percent better to get over the line and win games. So care is a huge part of the locker room. So that's very, very encouraging to hear. And uh, you being a technical coach, I, you know, TK, it's no secret. He even mentioned this on the last episode. We've kind of struggled at times as a franchise with set piece. So um, you coming in here and and, uh, and helping with that, I think, will be a, a huge benefit to this club for sure to try to get that stuff in the right direction. It's been a bit inconsistent now. It, it, it's shown up when it matters. You know, obviously in the playoffs this year, uh, it kind of came together for sure. So, um, yeah, we'd love a, a little bit more consistency with the set-piece play. Um, have you been to the United States before? Yes, I have been. I've been, obviously, I'm on a few holidays. So, me and my missus, we, we spent some time in Florida and Miami. And, nice. have, um, and New York, we've been to New York a few uh, twice, I think. And then... Um, okay. And then I actually had an experience with the MLR, even though it was brief. Um, so what happened was to myself, uh, when I was playing South Africa, the Lions, we had a teammate, uh, some guy, that, some crazy guy you guys will know by the name of Todd Cleaver, um, oh, yeah. who, actually, who actually played with us for two seasons. So there's some real good connections there. And in nice. 2019, um, just before COVID hit, I had some time away from the game and he contacted me um, to come help out for one month um, at the old, well, what used to be the Austin Herd. 
we yes. soon became the good brownies. So, yep. Yep. so um, I'd actually spend uh, a whole month um, where I said, oh, listen, I, I'm keen. So basically, I went over and coached there three for a whole month um, in the absence of their new head coach not having his visa yet. So, right. Okay. Um, so I, I spent the time in Austin with himself um, at the time. Uh, Andrew Sinola, the, okay. the center that he was he was coaching, and and Tane Tane Jarevic, who's with um, the Austin Blacks, who won the title. Yeah. So those so we were all just going there and then and, and coaching every morning. So they weren't fully pro then. So it was training at six to six to eight in the morning and six to nine at night. So. Wow. So so yeah so I went over and I spent the month there so that was my first little taste of the MLR and I think it's second year or so okay. um, and it's just been brilliant to, to see how the MLR I've seen a massive growth in you know obviously the the quality of the play um, clubs are investing more in their facilities and, mm -hmm. and, and all that and, and I've seen the league grow. Unfortunately there are still one or two teams that um that have left left the, the, the competition but I mean yeah. um, it is it is a tough thing. Here in France I don't think there's it's maybe three teams in the last five years that have actually made money in the French mm -hmm. top fourteen which is a multi million Euro competition, so it, it it is a tough tough um, economy, but uh, that's why also why you can only be impressed with what the Free Jacks have done um, since they've been since they've been um, in existence. Yeah, I mean, I think the Free Jacks approach from day one, you know, uh, embracing the rugby community and trying to draw in people that aren't familiar with rugby with things like festivals at the games has really, really helped this franchise. I mean, you know, we're we're practically selling out every single game. It's going to be interesting to see as uh, this season moves more for, further up into February. Those are cold months to Walt. I hope you've got uh, uh, plenty of parkas to bring over some big jackets, uh, some bulky jackets, because it gets very, very cold around here. But, you know, we've done really, really well in attendance, and I think that's because the Freejacks, like I said, have embraced the community from day one, um, and it's been awesome. So, you know, we, you, a lot to unpack there, but, you know, it doesn't sound like you've been into New England or the Boston area. New York, we don't no. like them down there, but uh, I'm sure you're really, really going to enjoy the Boston area. It's a great, great place. Um, I would highly recommend if you're a fan of history to take the um, the walking tour there in Boston to learn about the American Revolution, how it got started in this area for sure. But uh, final thing here, I, I want you to speak directly to the Free Jacks fans out there. There's a lot of hardcore Free Jacks fans. Uh, what do you have to say to them as you come on board here in the next couple months as an assistant head coach or assistant coach? Yeah, no, like I said in, in the right in the start is um, – is that I'm really excited. I think I think my first dealings with Tom, Tom and Scott before before we made the decision, and even with our first the discussions with with Ryan and Pom and them, I'm really excited about the the, the season coming up. I'm really excited about um, a squad that's going to look slightly different, but a squad that's now got a lot of experience um, mm -hmm. in, in in the MLR, and, and um, yeah, and I said like. I'm really excited to come and see how I can add to the environment. Um, and it's not a, just about the environment now having to adapt to me. It's also me that there's a group of guys that have that have live well together and, and there's a coaching structure there that, that's had success. So so just for me to try and adapt my into the system and see how I can add value to that system. So I'm really excited because that's the thing when you a coach and you come into new environments, it's about mm -hmm. challenging yourself and involving and, and finding little ways and uh, of, of making, making the environment better. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, so I'm really excited about this, the idea that I'm really excited to come and, uh, and see what veteran stadium looks like on a day. Uh, on a game day, with people yeah. shout, is, um, shouting for us, and 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 with the whole festival uh, atmosphere there, and I'm yeah. so yeah, I'm looking forward to my family to to also to experience that. So um, so yeah, so I said a, a enormous amount of excitement, enormous amount of motivation. Um, that's like I, I keep asking, I keep asking Tom and. And Ryan, when's our next meeting? When can we start doing this? When can we start doing that? So, so yeah. we're gonna get there. Uh, Ryan's just finished up with the NPC. He mm -hmm. obviously just give him a bit of time just to to 
to refresh a little bit and then um i said i've got another um another four weeks here in italy um and then mm -hmm. and then it's going to be falls to the walls for for the free jacks <laughs> and as i said i'm already working a little bit on the side but yeah no just looking yeah. forward to, to meeting everybody and 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 being part of something that's uh that's pretty special i see for me i played in the top leagues in the world of, coach now in the top 14 in all the leagues and I just feel like I'm really excited to come and experience this and, and this uh, MLR experience and the and and the free jacks being part of the free jacks family listen I mean I think you know you're talking about how excited you are I think the free jacks fans are very very excited to see what you can do as a coach with the, with the set piece and whatnot and, and coming in here and, and jumping on board uh, I think a lot of people are a little concerned, like not a lot, but just a little bit with Scott leaving and Will Webster departing as well. You know, we got Palm to keep that consistency. And obviously Ryan Martin has been here before as a head coach. But I think people were a little shaky about uh, the coaching changes that are taking place. But I think we're going to be even more confident having listened to you talk in this interview about how excited you are to come on board and what you can bring to the table. So this has been fantastic. Uh, I appreciate your time. Enjoy your time there in Italy while you still have it and uh you know like i said make, get ready for the cold weather here in boston it's coming right around the corner so uh we say one thing to exit the video it is huzzah we say that in the fan base every time we score a try in the stands at fort quincy which i'm sure you're going to love hearing we're going to say that i'm going to do a countdown in three yeah. two one huzzah thanks pal huzzah